Hello everyone. Today on this lecture we discuss about the dengue fever. The dengue fever is one of the life threatening conditions. Nowadays you will find the dengue fever cases and if we diagnose early the cases then there will be recovery will be easy. So in this lecture we discuss about the how the dengue fever is carried is caused and how, how the uh, pathophysiology means the the virus can enter into our body and what are the changes that will be take place in our body that will discuss on this lecture so the dengue virus dengue fever is caused by the arthropod borne virus and this vector is the antis aegypti mosquito so this uh, dengue virus uh, the dengue fever you say it is carried by the vector the mosquito is the vector and its name is antis aegypti so as it is caused by the arthropod, uh, as the mosquito is arthropod, so it is a called arthropod bond diseases. There are four serotypes are found: serotype one, serotype two, serotype three, and serotype four. And it is, uh, and uh, you see this uh, mosquito generally it bites on the daytime, and this is uh, features is is, uh, is seen to be quite different because it's having some uh, white black tiger like uh, tiger like pattern so it is called a tiger mosquito also called and other name of the dengue virus is uh, dengue fever is brock break bone fever because this uh, year the intense pain will be there and that will be similar to just like the uh, the breakage of the bone so it is a break bone fever also name now see when the infected we already know the female mosquito they will bite so here the female and is aegypti mosquito bites and the, when the infected female aegypti mosquito bite us and uh, they takes the suck our blood through its through its uh, proboscis and uh, uh, then the, they take our blood as a meal and the infected one who is caring about the virus uh, the dengue virus that will be this virus will enter into our skin so if the through this proboscis of the mosquito it enter to the skin so you know the outer layer of the skin is the epidermis and we need to the dermis we uh, need to the epidermis the dermis layer is there so the let's see how this uh, this virus enter in our body so here is the here is a female mosquito infected one infected mosquito will bite us infected mosquito is bite us and this uh, and the virus uh, through its saliva it enter into the epidermis layer that is the outer layer of the skin and beneath the epidermis that is the dermis layer is there and in dermis layer there are dendritic langerhans cells are present so these are called the dendritic langerhans cells dendritic langerhans cells that is present and this dendritic langerhans cells having a special features because it has a receptor okay and this receptor will be attached to the protein molecule that is present in the virus so first we have to see the structure of the virus so this is the structure of a virus and this virus uh, you see the outer layer is made of protein protein is the outer layer and within the inner one is the inner core is the genetic material and over to it that is the nucleocapsid and the outer layer is the envelope it's called and the outer is uh, that is the protein layers are there so in the dengue virus there is a 10 proteins are there three is the structural protein and seven are the non structural protein so the protein the outer layer that's the e protein is present and this e protein is attached to the receptor cell of the langerhans cells as i told the langerhans cells are present in the dermis layer and is having a receptor site and this site is attached to the e proteins of the of the virus and that is called the fusion means binding so after binding or uh, fusion, then the next step is the endo, um, endocytosis, means the cell, the virus will be entered into the cell. So here, this uh, uh, endocytosis number two, I have given the two. So the now the virus is entered into the cell and it's from a, uh, it's a, it's from a vacuole. So here we have the virus. What you want? The um, the genetic material now will be move out. If the, if the virus want to move from the from this uh, vacuole to the cytoplasm, he want to move from to this layer. So this what he do is create a acidic 
environment by a pH of less than 7. So that this acid due to this acetic layer, the outer vacuoles and the it will be that will be degraded and the RNA will be move out. Now the RNA will be come into the cytoplasm. So that is the given as the RNA replication. So the number of RNA or the RNA replication will be takes place and that will be moved to the cytoplasm. Then there then say what he want he want to make a genetic uh, to make a complete uh, to another shell take into a another shell so this RNA need protein that's why it's moved to the endoplasmic reticulum and it is present near to the nucleus so uh, this is the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum is very much closer to the nucleus so this virus RNA virus that will be reached to the Colony of virus that will be reached to the uh, endoplasmic reticulum that is called an assembly. So here assembly viral assembly will be step by that is given as the four. Then after viral assembly, so that create a outer layer. So already there are two layers. One is the envelope, another capsid. So capsid layer is formed from the it's get the protein from the endoplasmic reticulum and form a capsid layer. But this this is not a matured RNA because as is the outer layer, the envelope is not there. So it is called immature RNA. So make it complete, uh, complete safe. So it's again moved to the Golgi apparatus. In Golgi apparatus, it take protein. Protein is the outer layer. And now the complete structure of RNA is formed. Okay, and this is called the progeny, progeny of virus. And after its complete phase or in mature, then it will come by the exocytic process or come out from the cytoplasma or the cell to outer, outer shell. From the cell, it moves to the blood and in systemic circulation, it reached to the everywhere of our body. So when it's next, uh, after the cell, its next action is uh, target uh, area, its target location is the monocytes. And then monocytes, it's moved to the lymph nodes. When it's through the apparent drop, it's as to the, this is the virus, it's reached to the lymph node. This is blue structure, there's the lymph node. And it's entered to a lymph node. Then the monocytes, when it's come in contact with the monocytes, then the monocytes release some cytokine. That is the inflammatory cytokine. And these cytokines are the alarms, alarm like thing. So the cytokines uh, activate our immune system to do your job, to do your job. Like this is give an alarm to the immune system. So this is called the inflammatory cytokines. So the cytokines, as a number of cytokines, loads of number of cytokines are formed. So that is the overdrive of the immune system. So due to the excess cytokines, so that is called the cytokine strong will be fine. So this cytokine has a negative effect. So what is the negative effect? It will be affect to the endothelial cell. So in our blood vessel, the inner layer is the endothelial cell. And just to the inner layer of the endothelial cell, there is a sugar like made of sugar structure. The base, the sugar structure is there. That is called the glycocalyxy. 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 Glycocalyxis. So this structure is the endothelial layer present in endothelial. So due to the excess of cytokine, this layer, this layer will be degraded. And what happened? This will be that the leakage will be take place. So that the plasma or the fluid that will be come from this leakage from this side to leaking side to the outer cell. So that's what happened. Here also leakage, here also leakage. So every leakage will be take place. So the plasma will be decreased and the hemocrit level, H A E. Hemocrit level will be increases. That will be increases, but the plasma level will be decreases. That is called the plasma leakage. And next to the, uh, the after the uh, plan endothelial, endothelial cell, second is the, the virus having the hepatotoxic effect. So the parenchyma cell of the hepatocytes will be affected. So the hepatitis occur. And this uh, due to this uh, hepatocytes actions, the uh, this uh, elevation of the uh, liver cell will be seen. So max maximum case patients with uh, dengue fever, they having the liver enlargement will be fine. So in uh, due to the uh, uh, enlargement of the liver cell, the thrombopoietic hormone. So one of the hormone that will be helpful for the for, uh, for the formation of the platelets in the bone marrow. So the thrombopoietic hormone will be level will be decreases, and that will be cause the 
so the bone marrow with the uh, through the platelets are formed so the mega karyotic cell those are present uh, in the uh, bone marrow that will be is the less effect of the thrombopoietic hormone so there the platelet level will be decreases so normally the platelets will be 150000 to 450000 microliter will be present but there is a less effect of the uh, less production of the thrombopoietic hormone the platelet level will be decreases and that will be seen patchy so patch like red redness like structure seen in the area on the body area so this is happen so in some cases those who are uh, critical cases or in serious conditions then the the platelet level will be decreases about to 80000 and 40000 and the patient will be in the deteriorate deteriorate and the life threatening case will be occur so this is all about the pathogenesis how the virus will be affect to our body so here we see the clinical features or uh, you see the uh, clinical features of the de dengue fever characterized by three phase so one is the febrile phase another is the critical phase and the third one is the recovery phase in febrile phase is name indicating the temperature phase because onset of fever where after this incubation period means the after the entry of this uh, uh, virus to our body so when the viremia is occur so that will be rise of temperature so onset of fever that is more about 37 degrees celsius with some rashes that is the red color may be seen on the face area and also on the skin area will be seen myalgia means the severe pain in the muscles and also the orthalgia back bone bones and the joints will be painful conditions will be there and the retro orbital pain so in the orbital um, just uh, behind to the eye the orbital ridge just behind to the orbital is there will be uh, painful conditions will be found unbearable painful will be seen in the retro orbital area of the eye and the anorexia Mm, uh, not uh, not any uh, to eat not any desire to eat and also nausea uh, sensation of vomiting and some cases also vomiting also found so that are the febrile phase next to the febrile phase that is the critical phase after febrile phase the temperature will be suddenly uh, in the third or fifth day we see that the temperature will be decreases so in temperature decreases uh, but the plasma leakage will be start that is the inter so the hemostasis will be imbalance the equilibrium will be imbalance so temperature is decreases and you see in all fever if a common cold in any fever so upper respiratory infections so there will be nasal discharge and sore throat will be found in fever but in dengue fever there is not such such type of things will be seen uh, uh, the symptoms will be seen like uh, running nose and a congestion of uh, nose and a sore throat that are not seen and the plasma leakage will be start as the temperature reduces the plasma leakage will be start and also hepatitis occur as you already discussed the hepatitis the parenchyma cell will be affected and the inflammation occur and start and the platelet level will be decreases due to the less supply of th uh, thrombopoietic hormone next in the critical situations so some of the sign that will be we see the patient side that will be alarming situations if you find this type of situation in a patient then you would need to be immediately hospitalized the patients and the early treatment will be start so what are the alarming situations persistent vomiting if the patient is in persistent continuously three five six seven days of vomiting is continuously so that is one of the alarming situations and the restlessness patient feel restlessness dizziness that will be seen and the patient is altered conscious level means you are not oriented with time Mm, people and the uh, situation so he was not oriented become unconsistent and also tachycardia so the, if you find these things then that will be immediate intervention is required this is the alarm situation or the warning sign of the critical phase so after critical phase there the recovery phase will be started so next after the uh, after the critical phase uh, next two days 24 to 48 hours that will the recovery phase in this recovery the plasma leakage will be stop it's a uh, the integrity will be developed so that uh, the leakage will be stop and the extra reabsorption of the extra vascular fluid so the fluid that will be leak that will be stop so that the fluid will be retain in the Uh, blood vessels so this is the equilibrium or the hemostatic level will be maintained so that is the recovery phase and also in recovery phase one of the good sign will be find the patient the type of itching or the pruritis as 
seen. So that is the good sign or the recovery sign of the patients. So this is all about the dengue fever. And if uh, in dengue fever, early diagnosis is very much required. If we diagnose early and start treatment uh, for the dengue virus, then it will be helpful to the patients and the recovery will be easy. If there is no particular drugs for the dengue virus, so we have to we have to uh, we have to uh, continuously watch about our platelet level and also the uh, vitals temperature pulse respirations so we have to uh, we have to uh, watch them so that uh, any alarming or any critical situation is feel then patient to be immediately hospitalized and not never put the patients with the uh, if, uh, if the patient in uh, dengue hemorrhage, fever condition or in such condition not to be patient to be uh, stay at home that need to be uh, early uh, hospitalization and the treatment will be start. So hope, hope you understand about the pathophysiology of the dengue uh, fever. Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel.